Hello, I'm James Harvey, the professor of music theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. We'll start the timer, and in this next series of videos, we're going to be discussing sequences. And it's spelled just like it normally would be spelled, sequence. And to first show an example of a sequence, I'm going to write a bass line. Whoops, actually, I need to put a key signature first. We're going to be in D major. And these are all going to be root position chords for this example. D, G, A. There we go. So we're going from a tonic to a dominant, and then a deceptive progression to the submediant, and then a little bit of an odd motion there to the mediant, and then everything else actually looks pretty good here. So if we go back to our harmonic progression chart, this series of chords, the submediant to the mediant, doesn't actually follow standard harmonic progression. And that's because what's going on here is a sequence. And in a sequence, well first the definition of a sequence is a recurring pattern at different pitch levels. So there's two parts to a sequence. There's the pattern and then there's where it goes with that pattern. The pattern here is dropping down a perfect fourth and then coming up by step. So it's actually technically three uh, three notes here. So we're, let me play this bass line so you can hear it and it'll sound very familiar. Hopefully. That's the bass line to Paco, Johann Paco Bell's Canon in D, one of the most recognizable tunes in existence. So what happens here is there's three iterations of this pattern. Bum, 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 bum. The pattern is dropping that, that fourth and then up a step, and it happens one, two, three times. Now what's going on in a sequence is that the pattern governs everything and it's no longer about harmonic progression. So the chords actually cease to function because what happens is our ears latch on to that pattern and that's what we hear instead of the harmonic progression. So what's actually happening here is not that series of chords, this is a sequence. And there's a lot of different ways to analyze sequences. I'm not gonna get too in depth with these videos. Um, maybe in the supplemental materials we'll, we'll add some stuff. But I just wanna kind of briefly talk about what sequences are and then show some of the more common examples of sequences. So again, a sequence is a recurring pattern at different pitch levels. And if you think about a pattern, how many iterations do you need for a pattern to actually occur? Two is not really a pattern. That's just happenstance that two things happen in a row. Once you've reached three, now you're looking at a pattern. So it needs to be at least three iterations in most situations for this to be that recurring pattern, which makes up the sequence. And a sequence can really be anything. Like, let me go back over to the piano keyboard and I'll play, play this sequence. So just arpeggiating a triad. Now I'm gonna make that sequence go up by step. Here's the next iteration. Oops, I played down twice. So you kind of see what's happening there. It can be any pattern as long as it's moving um, the same distance each time you're reiterating the, the statement. Uh, and then there's also a couple of different kinds of sequences. There's diatonic sequences and there are uh, what are known as chromatic sequences or real sequences. Let me show you a quick example of the difference between these. Actually, you know, I don't even think I need to write this down. I can just play it on the keyboard. So I'm going to do that same sequence that I just did. That's a major triad. And then if I go up a step and stay in C major, that's now a minor triad. So this is a diatonic sequence because it's falling into those slots that are created by the key. Now, if I want to make this a chromatic sequence, I take that first chord and then I'm gonna move up to a step to D, and it needs to still be a major chord. And then we go up another step, major. So on, so forth. That's a, considered a chromatic sequence. We'll cover those a lot later than, uh, than this. Pretty much everything we're gonna be looking at for the next few videos are gonna be diatonic sequences. And in the next video, we're gonna cover the most common of the diatonic sequences, the circle of fifths sequence. Thank you.